Namaste all, very good morning. If you were waiting to tune in live with me, apologies, it was a few minutes delayed, there was a wee technical issue there. The application wouldn't open for some reason this morning, but we've got through it. So welcome to your practice. This morning practice is your foundation hatha, that beginner accessible, beginner friendly practice. A few challenges as always dotted in between, keep you engaged in your practice, always mindfully applying. Play with your practice, no pressure, no force. To begin, be in a seated position, if you think that's comfortable to maintain for a few moments. Crossing the legs or the dress is sitting on the heels and lifting the spine. If this is challenging to maintain for a few moments, you can be in a lying down position. Choose which is appropriate. Adopting a hand gesture, a mudra, if you find that that's helpful. Sit as tall as you can, if you're seated that is. No matter where you are, eyes closed and a mouth closed. Let's give yourself a few moments to really land, to arrive. Create space for practice this morning. Within this space, we're not trying to resist, we're not trying to suppress any thoughts or any feelings or any sensations. Just witness. Witness through the physical body, how the physical body feels. And know through the condition of the mind. With this attuned awareness, we soft, you become conscious of the breath, and we'll do so at the very centre of the belly. Without trying to create, just allow the breath to flow and experience your body's reaction to breath at the belly. Belly rises with the incoming breath, and the belly falls with the outgoing breath. And continue with this awareness for a few moments. Belly rises with the incoming breath, and the belly falls with the outgoing breath. As the mind begins to wander, be patient, just know where it goes, and so you draw it back. If you're seated, please do remain as you are. If you're in, in any other variation, please softly stir, make your way to seated, but take the time mindful of dizziness. Once you're in a seated position, if comfortable Namaskar and Mudra, palms are lightly pressed, taking a moment set intention, a sankalpa, or a dedication for your practice. Release your hands. Chin to chest, and a few gentle rings, opening with you. Namaste. We'll softly raise the knees up. You can tuck the heels a little closer if you're in a seated position and come front on tall forward, or alternatively sweep the legs around as you need to. Come in front on tall forward in whichever way is necessary for you. The eventual intention is a forearm's distance, so if you place the elbow on the inside edge of one knee and where the heel of the palm comes against the other edge of the other knee, that's a forearm's distance here between your knees and a forearm's distance from your knees to where you place your hands. Then raising up, threading the fingers, toes in line with the knees. But please note that this is a challenge for you. They find this is very challenging on your wrist, this particular angle. Have your hands far front as you need to. Play around with making fists if required. Feels good, you build towards being here. Toes in line with the knees, toes on top. A pointer between the knees, an imaginary point also between the hands, moving around these points in small circles coming together in a figure of eight. Start with the lower half. Make a half circle around the point between the knees, then make a full rotation around the point between the hands, then completing your bottom figure, your bottom circle, bring together a figure of eight or infinity symbol. Start with smaller rotations initially. And if all is beginning to respond well, you can begin to increase the diameter of the circles and diameter of the rotation. Beautiful and changing direction. So feel it more. No pressure, no force. 
As you circle back, reaction in your hips and your knees as you circle front, your shoulder blade, your shoulder, your wrists, your fingers. Can you connect your hands fully with the mat? Completing your current figure of eight. Then return to the original position, shoulder over the wrist, hip over. So when the hip is a little, the knees rather a little wider than the hip, and the toes in line with the knees. A few gentle rounds of your tiger breathing. Note the position of your shoulder in the initial position. We'll endeavor to maintain this as we work. As you inhale, softly drop the belly. So we'll work from the lower back first. Feel that the mid lower back works towards the mat, then your middle back, the upper back. Begin to draw your shoulder blade down the back so you slightly lift the chest through and lightly lift the head also. Head is lasting to release as you exhale around your lower back, your middle back, your upper back, then release the head. Inhale, arch, lower, middle, upper, slightly lift the chest, then followed by the head. Exhale, lower, middle, upper, then release the head. We'll lead with the head. As you inhale, lift the head slightly first, followed by the chest dropping, your middle back, feel the lower back, perceive this belly going to mass. Exhale, release the head first, release the head around the upper back, middle back, lower back, shoulder still over wrist, inhale, lead the head, lift the chest, middle, lower, exhale, release the head, shoulder still over the wrist, around the upper, middle, lower, beautiful, inhale back to an easy spine, gaze softly front. Toes still length the knees as best you can. As you exhale, sit back. Sitting on the heel is the eventual intention. Inhale, elevating up. Exhale, pushing back. Don't fight for death. Inhale, raising back. Exhale, pushing back. Inhale, raising up. Top the toes if it feels good. Exhale, pushing back. Inhale, can you keep your ribs slightly drawn up? Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, smoothly up, on top the toes if you went there and bring your knees and your feet together, if it's accessible for you, sitting back on the heels in Bhadrasana, spine is lifted as best you can, if this is challenging you're welcome to be tall on your knees, or any seated variation where you can lift your spine, no pressure or force. Working a little with the shoulder, taking care if there's any tenderness here. Take your arms out to either side. A medium bend in the elbows and palms to face front. You're thinking your wrist, your elbow and the shoulder are working towards them in a straight line initially. Grab an imaginary glass or bottle of something and then never pour that out behind you. As you pour that out behind you, you're imagining you're working as if you're trying to bring your elbow up and over. And this motion is coming, it's coming from and is encouraged to come from the shoulder. Recognize that you're not lifting up the ribs or lifting up your chest to achieve this. Keep the ribs down, through movement from the shoulder, maintaining the pour out movement. Breathe really well. It's very comfortable, draw your chin back in a mild double chin, so you're ramping it directly back, not chin to throw. Then allow your left ear to drop to your left shoulder. Pour out a little further. Breathe really well. Beautiful, back to centre, chin still in the mild double chin. Right ear, right shoulder. If very comfortable, straighten the arms just a touch. Beautiful. Smoothly back to centre. Release the hands. A light roll over the shoulder one direction and then the other direction. We'll come to standing. Hand support if you need to. You're just playing around. No hands. Raise tall on the knee. Hands out to either side if you need for extra balance. Step the left or right foot front, but make sure to heel the toe is grounded. Tuck the back toes, think feet pushing away from each other, smoothly come. Good, no rush. Take the time as you come all the way up. Once you've arrived, turn towards the long edging of your mat and take your feet to be about shoulder distance apart or a little wider. Toes pointing straight ahead. If you have any talent in the shoulders, perhaps you're having your arms out at a level that are pointing slightly downward. If it's comfortable, start with your arms and shoulder height. Getting a little twisted will move with the breath. Take it in here. 
As you exhale your left hand to your right shoulder, the right hand swings behind in a circle for the left hip and get a little twisted to your right. As you get twisted, keep the ribs back. Inhale smoothly back to centre, exhale to your left. Inhale centre, exhale right. Inhale centre, exhale left. Inhale centre. Exhale right, inhale center, exhale left, inhale center, exhale right, and be there for a moment. No pressure on the knee. Recognize if you're excessively arched to your back here and lifting your ribs to mimic further depth in your twist. Keep the ribs slightly drawn back. Maintain that length in the spine and beautiful twist. Inhale, center, exhale to your left. Noticing the difference between both sides. The gaze goes to your left, you're comfortable for the neck, but it can come back to any degree if there's any pressure, any discomfort. Beautiful, inhale back. On the exhale, releasing your hands down. Taking your feet wider now, so we're venturing towards that four foot apart, quite a wide distance, shorter is welcome to build towards the wider. Heels are in line, the feet are parallel, sternum is a little back, extend the arms straight out in front and then halfway down. So they're pointing almost a 45 degree angle. Think of moving from your bicep, which will be moving from your shoulders, so not just simply flipping the pan. Allow the breath to flow and proceed to turn the biceps in opposite direction. One is turning out and one is turning in. Moving from the shoulder. Now you can stay at this point, but if all is well, out to the side, still at that 45 degree angle down, so halfway pointing towards the ground, still moving from the bicep, still responding well, we raise you to shoulder height. But as you come to shoulder height, and you come to the edge of the turn to the bicep, recognize that the shoulder isn't elevating up itself, this will be shoulder raise involved, keep the shoulder raised down, and truly work from the shoulder. If there's any pinching occurred as you progress through each of the variations, come back a step. Beautiful. Come to rest with the movement, both palms to face down. You're feeling like there's fatigue in your shoulders, start from a position of hands on the thighs. You're mindfully applying in your practice the shoulder height. Next inhale, flip your right palm to face the ceiling, then bring the right arm nice and straight along the ear, create this 90 degree angle. Ribs a little back, next exhale, fold to your left from the waist, still with the 90 degree between the arms. Inhale back, exhale, release the right, shoulder height, flip the pan. Inhale the left, in line with the ear as best you can, exhale, fold to your right from the waist. Inhale back, exhale, release, inhale the right, flip the pan, arm in line with the ear, exhale, fold to your left, and then maintain it there for a few steady breaths. Note that there's no pressure on your left knee, feel as the pressure, come back up, share the weight more with your right, below the navel is active. Inhale smoothly up, exhale release the right, shoulder height with the palm, inhale the left, raise it up with the shoulders relaxed, sternum back, exhale fold to your right from the waist, feel the fold from the waist, beautiful opening of the left side. What's happening to your head? Often as you fold, we allow the head to simply drop. Keep the head at mid-level, creating strength through the neck. Beautiful. Inhale smoothly back. Exhale, release. Pass the face down, release your hands to your thighs. Oh, leg rolling over the shoulder one direction. And then the other direction, shoulders free. The intention from here is to fold towards parallel and then to get twisted. If you have any challenge in your back of your body, in the lower back in particular, you can bend the knees as much as you need to as you come in. Or alternatively, I'll encourage you to stay in an upright position, fingertips in front of the chest, and as we exhale, you get twisted to your right and your left, and releasing one arm back to centre. So choose which is appropriate. Staying upright, but if all is well, in your practice, there's no fight, hands in the hips. Knees a little soft, take an inhale. Push the hip back a little as you exhale and hinge forward from the front of the hip. 
Sternum is kept a little back as you fold. Chin in the mile, double chin. Now we're working towards parallel, but you can be anywhere before that. If this feels steady, all going well so far, arms, shoulder, height. Take an inhale. As you exhale, you're twisting to your right and you're endeavouring to bring your left hand to your right ankle, shin or thigh, but not on the knee. Very steady, extend the right arm up and perhaps you look at the hand, but no fight on the neck. Your next inhale, return to parallel, arm, shoulder height. Exhale to your left, right hand toward the left leg, left arm up, feels good, gaze the hand. Inhale, centre. Exhale to your right. Inhale, centre. Exhale to your left. Inhale, center. Exhale to your right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Beautiful. Exhale, hands to the hips. Little bend in the knee. Sternum is back as you inhale. Smoothly up. Take the time. Release the hands. And you can edge or step your feet back. Whichever works best. Turning towards the front edge of your mat. A foot's distance or so, or maybe a little more, depending on the space you are, if there's a wall in front of you. From the front edge of the mat. Feet shoulder distance apart a little wider. Back bending forward fully. Any challenge in the back of the body, mindful of the depth you fold front. And keep bending the knee. We're going nice and steady to the first few rounds. Hands begin on the thighs, then bend your knees. As you bend your knees, note your knees dropping towards each other. Do they drop towards the outer edging of the mat? Can you bend your knees with your knees still tracking the direction of your toes? And endeavour to do so each time you bend your knees. As you inhale, raise your arms. In line with the ears if you can, but be before if necessary. This is good here. Pop the pelvis under. A slight back bend. Don't drop the head back. It's just a gentle gaze upward. Your next exhale. Push the bum back a little so you hinge front from the hip. The bend remains in the knees. Choose an appropriate depth for you. Swing the arms and release the head, but eyes are open. As you inhale, a good bend in the knee. Push through the feet. Maintain the bend in the knees. You tuck the pelvis, gentle back bend. Exhale, fall in front. Choose an appropriate depth. Inhale to the nose. No strain of the shoulder or the neck. Exhale to the nose. Feel the mark. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, where do you feel it? Inhale, keep the bend in the knee, talk the pelvis consciously. Exhale, really slow down as you come front. Feel and work from the hip. Choose an appropriate depth. Swing the arms back and release the head. And on the inhale, just simply release the arms and we'll maintain the forward fold. Choose an appropriate depth for you. If the hands come at ease to the mat, they're here, but they bear no weight. Arms and head heavy. If you're up off the mat, that's beautiful work too. Any experience with dizziness, perhaps are parallel or higher, hands brace in the thigh. Paying attention to your knees. With a bend in your knees, are your knees leaning and tracking towards your toes? Are they falling towards your toes? Can you lean back to your knees directly over your ankles? You can raise your hips up higher and straighten the legs as much as you need to to achieve this knee over ankle position. Really, really well. No four. Feel and apply. Breathe. Release the head. Next inhale, we'll to start much as lift the head and chest slightly. If your fingertips are on the mat, they can be here, but if very comfortable, perhaps you're bringing your palms together. And I will encourage you to keep your knee over the ankle, so can you lean back to achieve this? Then bend the knee to the point you can maintain knee over the ankle. Make sure that the feet are at least shoulder distance apart. Don't fight. You're working towards almost parallel between the thigh and the ground, but maintain knee over the ankle. No. The little challenge through the thighs, through the belly, but don't fight, breathe, just play. Last breath, just play with your practice, where do you feel? 
Beautiful, raise the hip up. Fingertips to the mat or on your shins and a little sway side to side. Keep bending your knees. Note the body's reaction. Beautiful, come to rest with the movement. Bend your knees as much as you need to get the tips of your fingers and maybe your palms to the mat. Keep your feet at shoulder distance apart and walk your feet towards the back of the mat. Add a Mukha Shonasana and the downward dog. That good distance between the hands and the feet. The torso back towards the thighs, but you're keeping the sternum drawn in. You're not leading with the chest, creating compression in the middle back and straight in the shoulders. Keep the head and the ribcage held steady. Spread the fingers. If necessary, if you've got a challenge in the shoulder, challenge in the lower back, or if there's a lot of tightness in the back of the legs, bend the knee. Work with lengthening the spine. Bend your knee, gaze is front, taking care from front whichever way is necessary. Your right knee behind the right wrist, toe in line with the knee, left knee behind the left wrist, toe in line with the knee. Then gently roll up. And we'll take care, come front in whichever way is necessary for you. So your knees are about shoulder distance apart, perhaps just a little less, choosing the appropriate depth. The toes are in line with the knee. The intention is playing around Ustrasana, just the preliminary steps will come in. If necessary, you can tuck the toes. So mindful of pressure on ankle and the knee. Focus on pelvis, tucking under and hip pushing front. Hands will begin on the hips, gaze is front, extend your left arm front. Then proceed to drop your gaze to your right. Now any degree is welcome, the eventual intention is looking at the heel. Notice you're not dropping the bum back, keep the pelvis slightly tucked, hip pushing front. Then if this is accessible, reach back with your right hand and lightly rest it on the heel. You're not bearing a lot of weight on the heel. Keep the hip pushing front, buttock muscle lightly active. Breathe. Beautiful. Right hand comes back to the hip, gaze is front, left hand to the hip. Extend your right arm front, you're stretching front at the right arm. Keep the pelvis slightly tucked and hip pushing front. Drop your gaze to your left. Look for the heel of the eventual tension. Left hand on the heel if it feels steady, but you're not pushing back and leaning all the weight on it. Keep the hip pushing front. Pelvis tucks under. Build your practice. Beautiful. Hand to the hip, followed by the gaze center. Release your right hand to the hip and untuck your toes if you're there. If it's accessible for you, it's within your practice. Keep your knees and feet in the alignment they're in. Then sit back, bending at the knee. The intention is bringing the buttock muscles to the ground with your heel outside edge of your hip. If this is challenging, I do appreciate this can create a challenge. You can build your practice towards it by bringing your toes and your knees together and sitting in Vidrasana. Furthermore, if this is challenging, you can tuck your toes or any seated variation. So choose which is appropriate for you. Lifting the spine, sit nice and tall. Ribs are back and down. Your right hand to your right side and behind. Left hand over the right thigh. If it's comfortable, however, reach your right arm around and search for the left hip. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, get a little twisted. Twist to your right. Twist through the torso, then the head follows. No strain on the neck. Inhale smoothly back to center. Exhale to your left, left hand can be on the ground, keeping you lifted or reach for the right hip. As you exhale, you're twisting, you're keeping your sternum back, you're keeping your chin in a mild double chin. Inhale, smoothly back. Stretch front, 
Take care as you straighten the legs, you're not straightening entirely, but as you take a little bit of a bend out of the inner knee. Raise front and all fours, you're thinking that forearms distance in between the knees, forearms distance, knees to hands and raising up, hands further front as you need to. Spread the fingers, can you have your elbows pointing straight back, so you're trying to externally rotate through the shoulder, and shoulder blade works a little bit down the back. Endeavouring to maintain this, elbow pits pointing front, and the elbow points pointing back. A few rounds of your movement through the hip, keeping the shoulders over the wrist or in the position that you created initially, then encourage movement through the hip in one direction without disturbing the shoulders. In the opposite direction, circle through the hip. Beautiful, back to centre. This is good here, might have any challenge through the Hip, as you exhale, gaze to look at your right hip. Inhale, centre. Exhale, drop the gaze around to your left heel. Inhale, centre. Exhale, right. Inhale, centre. Exhale, left. Inhale, centre. Few rounds of your tiger breathing. Please do take rest if necessary. Never fight. As you inhale, arch through your lower back. Middle. Upper, slightly lift the head. As you exhale, around the lower, middle, upper, release the head around to the spine. Inhale, arch, low, middle, upper, exhale, around. Inhale, arch, exhale. Next inhale back to an easy spine, just slightly front, if you're not at the front edge of your mat already, we'll crawl front, right hand, left knee, left hand, right knee, right hand, left knee, left hand, right knee, once you've arrived at the point that you can't go no further and your knees are towards the front edge of your mat, if it's accessible, cross the legs over, please don't fight, you can come back whichever way is necessary, sit back. And mindful of any solid objects behind you, then roll back. Rolling on your back, and your leg rocking side to side once you've arrived. And no fight to arrive here. Take your time. Beautiful. Once you've arrived, release the clasp of the legs. Ground the feet, extend your legs out straight. And this is good here. Encouraging you to extend both arms up over the head and behind, trying to bring that arms to the floor. But note that if you try to bring your hands to the floor, if it's excessive to bring them here, do your ribs elevate up. This can be perceived as space between just the base of your shoulder blade, maybe even the base as the shoulder blade is actually lifted. So as best you can, you can raise your arms back up to a degree or a point that you can keep the ribs back or down. And you feel that there's a connection between the middle back now. And the mild arch perhaps is maintained at the lower back. So arms as high as you need to to achieve this. The right hand grabs the left wrist or forearm and draw the arms over towards the right side. This feels good. Bring your both legs towards the right side. Then stack the left leg on top of the right. Cross it over if very comfortable. But don't form. A few steady breaths. Release the left leg, leg rather if you stack it on top. Bring the feet back and through the center, followed by the arms. Then the left hand grabs the right forearm or wrist, preferably the forearm. Then bring both arms over to your right, but you're remembering your ribs are connecting. Then smoothly bring both legs to your left if accessible. Furthermore, stack your right to leg on top of the left. Feel and breathe. Where's the response? Perhaps the outer edge of your right hip now, working up the side of the body, working towards the shoulder. Beautiful. Smoothly unstack the legs if you come there. Then bring your legs back to centre, followed by the arms. Then releasing the hands over the sides of the body and put a bend in the knees. 
Heel to the fingertips. Your feet are as wide as your shoulders. Stay to Pandasana set up. Your knees are pointing in the direction of your toes. Recognize if your knees drop in towards each other. Knee over ankle is the intention. Chin, mild double chin. Push the feet actively into the mat as you inhale, raise the hip. Note that it's your lower back that elevates first and that the middle back is still grows. As you continue to inhale, if it's part of your practice, explore the middle back and then the upper back. As you exhale, keep your feet very firm. Upper, middle and lower. Little by little you build. Inhale, pressurize the feet, engage lower body as you push the hip. Exhale, release. Inhale, smoothly push the hip. Exhale, release, upper, middle, lower back. Feel each vertebrae. Inhale, smoothly push the hip. Be there for a moment, but no pressure or force. Keeping the gaze straight up to the ceiling. Trying to resist the temptation to drop the head side to side. Keep the spine in line. Keep your feet firm. Note that you're not gripping the mat with your toes. Your toes are relatively relaxed. The feet are firm in all four directions. Exhale, upper, middle. Lower back, take care as you release. There's no rush in doing so. Once you're grounded, feet together and the knees together. If you have the space, straight arms out to either side, fingertip to shoulder in line, palm down. If necessary, adopt cactus arms, a 90 degree arm, elbow to shoulder in line. Sternum is back. As you exhale, your knees to your right, accessible for your neck, knees to your left. Inhale, center. Exhale, knees to left, gaze to right. Only to the point you can keep the opposite shoulder grounding. Inhale, center. Exhale, knees right. Gaze left. And maintain it there for a moment. It's a gentle twist. If your left shoulder is elevating, bring your legs back more towards center where you can feel the grounding. Beautiful. Inhale, center. Exhale, to your left. Feel the back of the right shoulder grounding now. Super. Inhale smoothly back to center. On the exhale, draw the thighs in towards the chest. Hands go by the sides of the body. With your thighs working in towards the chest, note that the middle back is well connected with the mat. Chin the mild double chin, and perhaps the lower back's even connected or the mild arch is maintained. So please know if you can be here or return to this step. This is beautiful work in building your practice. If comfortable, however, take your knees and your feet to be about hip distance apart. Then send your thighs away from your body to where your knees are stacked, directly stacked over the hip. Knee over the hip. Middle back, mild large perhaps. I'm oh, sorry, apologies. Lower back, mild large perhaps. Middle back is connected. Chin, mild double chin. Feel and breathe. Lower legs are relaxed. This feels good, you build your practice a little further. You raise the lower leg up so there's a 90 degree now is the intention between the back of the thigh, back of the calf muscle, and the toes go back towards you, your heels push away. Note the connection, mild arch lower, middle back connected, chin mild double chin. Note if your chin begins to drop towards the ceiling, coming back a step where you can maintain this connection, and there's a length in the spine. Think engaging to the base of the pelvic, Light drawing up action. As a result, the lobe and navel becomes active. Beautiful. Feels good. Extend one arm up. Still good. Extend the other arm up. But then retract the shoulders back. So you feel at the back and the outer edge of the shoulder as best you can are connecting with the mat. And if you have any challenge in the lower back or neck in particular, please take care. Be aware of the steps you've taken so far.
All is responding well, just enjoying your practice. Extend your legs to be a little straighter. Now you can have your knees bent as much as you need to. Little practice, extend the legs towards straight. Maintain the arms up as best you can, but don't fight. Note the really beautiful reaction in the front of the thigh and the hip flexor. Beautiful, still good. Don't fight, just play. Inhale, open up the legs as wide as you comfortably can. Maintain that integrity of the alignment that we initially set up. My large lower back perhaps, but middle back, so back of the ribs are connected. Chin isn't sliding up towards the ceiling. Feel, breathe. Beautiful feet back with legs straight, hip distance apart. We come back step by step. And this is good. Bend the knee 90 degree, calf muscle to thigh, still pushing the heel. Beautiful, then release the arms as you exhale. Draw the thighs in towards the chest. Grab the legs. Head towards the knees, nice tight ball thighs. As you inhale, release the head. Oh, release the legs. End of your practice. Adjust the body as you come to Shavasana. Making all of the necessary adjustments to bring your body into the position of rest, the position of effortlessness as you come to the end of your practice. Allow the eyes to close. Allow the mouth to close. Coming to the end of your practice, know that there's nothing more required of you. Simply by allowing yourself to be here is more than enough. You can release all the weight of your body, any tension that may still linger, any worry of the mind, any thoughts that are occupying your mind that aren't serving you, can be all released into the earth, being accepted, never been come up. Safe in the knowledge the body is held, it's secure. Allow your awareness to come to the very tip of your, th your tongue. And at the tip of the tongue, you notice any sensation. Without trying to create, just experience. Moving throughout the watery space to the mouth. Entering the nasal passage at the back of the throat. Not any sensation as you move down through the nasal passage. Moving with an exhale out through the nose and up around the eyes. Sweeping around the ear and the crown of the head. Allow your awareness to softly move through the whole body, noting any sensation, vibration, pulsing, what arises, what arises rather from your practice. Through the crown of the head, Returning now to the forehead, the nose, lip, chin. Through the base, the throat, over to shoulders, elbows, wrists and fingers. Welcoming any response from your practice to your chest. Right, left, centre of chest. Rib, belly. Noticing any release or sensation at the back of the neck shoulder blades, and each vertebrae of your spine descending the upper, middle, and lower part of the spine. What's the response to your practice in the whole of the pelvic region? Down through the thighs and the knee, through the calf muscles and the ankles, Tops of feet, soles of feet, the tips of the toes, the whole body, the whole body, the whole body. Feel the deep 
thinly and the deep breath that occupies and holds the whole body. Note where you experience this rest the most, then reside there for a moment. Still, all body is resting. And as you allow the body to remain within this position of deep rest with soft to extend your awareness to beyond the body. And within this extension of your awareness, it begins to transition to a more everyday, a more engaged awareness. An awareness which begins to influence your breath and stir the body. The breath becomes fuller and more conscious and the breath stirs at toes, at fingers, at neck. The feet come together. The right arm extends up and over, left to the belly. Fold the left knee. Take a moment to roll to your right. Once you feel steady, explore a seated position. Eyes closed, spine lifted. Coming to the end of your practice, take a moment to note any difference at the beginning of your practice. Gently begin to rub your palms, generate some heat. We're welcoming back the nervous system. Place my hands over the eye, gently cup, and extend a massage out the face. Taking the hands a small distance away from the ears, and gently bring the ears open, gaze to the palms. Namaste. Thank you all so much. I hope you had a good practice. I hope the rest of your day goes well. As we start to transition back to more regular classes, I'll still perhaps keep up with the online content, but Please do go through the poll that I've posted on the page, on the Facebook page, to let me know if that's something that you're interested in, it's just a yes or a no, so you can choose there, and we'll work out a schedule from there. You're welcome in the regular classes as they start to be reintroduced. Look forward to connecting with you in your next practice, and hopefully in person. Thank you.